All right, guys, so good morning. My name is Richard Kelly. I'm on the Inspire Committee for Forge here in Topeka, and we've started a monthly uh, video uh, that we're doing with local organizations here in the Topeka area called Forge Cares. Uh, and so this month we have Amber with us here who works with Project Topeka, and we're really excited to have Amber here with us this morning and tell us a little bit more about Project Topeka and how they're giving back and helping that Topeka. Now, one thing before we get into it, Amber, that I learned in just doing some research on Project Topeka is that you all have been involved with the, the community since 1986. I, I did not know that, that Project yep. Topeka went back that far. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> so with that being said, Forge members, uh, we, we want to get them involved and, and interactive with, with your company and, and how they can help. So what would you like Forge members, you know, kind of starting out to know about Project Topeka? Um, Project Topeka actually started out as the um, original food drive for Topeka and Shawnee County, like you said, back in 1986. So we've been serving our community for 35 years. Awesome. Um, it started originally after the holidays when it was recognized that there was a need um, for the food banks to have food after the holidays. Um, so KSNT was an original starter. There was a couple other um, companies that started this drive. Um, it has been going on in February for several years, but about 10 years ago with the change and how things are going and obviously internet coming into play, um, we switched to year, right, year round um, food drive. Um, so we support seven food banks um, through Topeka and all of those food banks use a checks and balance system. So they're not just handing out food. You have to show your ID sh and they check the last time you came in. So you can't jump around between them and just, you know, keep collecting food. That way everybody um, gets what they need. When we get donations from corporations or individuals, whether it's per uh, non-perishable items or cash donations, we then um, divide that up to the seven food banks based on their size appropriately so that they're getting the right amount of support that they need. Um, so we don't give the same amount to each one. We look at how much they have going out and then we make a determination as to how much we'll support. Um, so that's one thing that we've been doing, like I said, the last 35 years. And then about two years ago, thanks to um, Advisors Excel and some other corporate donors, we started a new program called Fun Food Fridays. Um, we wanted to expand our help to the younger generation specifically. Um, so we started with one school, we're now in three schools, and we provide 100% um, Friday backpack um, snack packs that go home with about 10 items, roughly, to all of the kids um, within those three schools within the 501 district. Awesome, awesome. So today would be, for example, one of those days, is that yep. right? Yep. Cool. We we deliver, I think, on Tuesdays and then they hand out on Fridays. They've Very had to cool. change the model slightly differently because of COVID and everything else. Sure. I'm sure that's that's uh, caused, a, I shouldn't say interference, but a, a little bit of an adjustment in how things have been going. Yeah, it did. And we had to do a lot of um, planning with 501 on how we could get the bags distributed, you know, especially if they have kids that are fully virtual. Um, but we've made that work really nicely with them. The principals at the three schools we support are really great with um, helping us get that organized um, to make sure that the kids get what they need. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, one thing that, uh, like I had touched on, is we want Forge members to get involved in, in the Topeka community in, in a variety of different ways. What's something that Forge members could do to help, help you or help Project Topeka in, in supporting their mission? So honestly, Project Topeka wouldn't be what they are today without our corporate donor support and individual support um, alike. Um, there are several big companies that do drives that support Project Topeka, um, to name a few, you know, BNSF, Blue Cross Blue Shield, the state offices, the county offices. Um, there's Advisors Excel, you know, another one. So yeah. any, anything you can do, and, and we don't, we don't restrict like how you do your drive. We're there to support you. Um, and whether you want to do where it's monetary or it's food items, we just ask, you know, on non-perishable items that are collected that there's no glass 
um, just because of transportation issues and things like that. Um, with the cash donations that we get, we actually are able to make your dollar go further than you can make your dollar go because we are a 501c3 nonprofit. And so we have the tax exemption. We work with um, some of the local grocery stores to be able to get product at a really good price in a bulk price for mm -hmm. our um, seven food banks. So we'll reach out to them and be like, hey, do you guys all need hamburger? And we'll get it ordered for them at really good price that they can include then those perishable items that they can't get otherwise, you know, on a regular basis from, from donations. Um, and honestly, any kind of drive that anyone would want to do, like we're here to support you. We can pick up the um, donations. We can come out and judge. You know, we've gone out and judged like um, can sculptures before. Um, we, but we need that. We need that corporate and the community support because what we do really is we're like a liaison between those seven food banks because while there are the big ones that everyone knows about, there's a few small ones that don't otherwise get the support that they need. And they really use about 75% of what we give them to make their food banks stay substantial. Okay. How long have you been um, involved with Project Topeka ever? Uh, so I first got involved, I work for the Department of Veterans Affairs. And when I first got involved, we were able to do a local drive at the VA. Since some things have changed with the government, we can't do that anymore. Um, a lady that was currently on the board recognized my drive and, and she was retiring from the VA. So she asked um, if I'd like to join and that was yeah. in 2006. <laughs> so, oh, wow. and then in, yeah. And then in 2010, um, when we kind of restructured and got more of a formal board just due to some other changes and, and getting um, some other things, you know, like I said, stood out because when we started, it was kind of that grassroots um, mentality. And so we kind of mm -hmm. got some more formal things in place. I became vice president um, in 2010. So cool. six, uh, how many years is that? 14 years? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 14 years total and 10 years yeah. as a vice president. Yeah. Very cool. It sounds like a company you've really enjoyed working with. Um, I mean, the biggest thing I like about it is we're not in it. None of us are in it for a paycheck. Sure. Um, none of us make a salary. We go pick up donations using our own vehicles. We are trying to keep uh, um, as much as we can going to um, the nonprofit food banks that we support. Um, in fact, until a few years ago, we had pretty much zero overhead because we even had some space donated to us for like 30 plus years. We wow. finally had to go out and get our own warehouse. I mean, that was like, <laughs> but so we still have very minimal overhead, you know, just to keep the lights on. All of us volunteer our time. I mean, I'm doing this right, right now on my lunch, you know, because yeah. I still work full time. Most of us are full time. We have a few retired um, people that have been on for 20 plus years. They were around in the beginning. And they they supported that much. They stay on today. And if if um, like for example, what's one of maybe an upcoming goal that the project Topeka has here in the near future? Has there been anything that you um, that you or the team have been looking into? Well, so we try not to set quote unquote like number goals only yeah. because what we, yeah what we find is um, especially when like the market was crashing, the focus would always be on that one ton we didn't raise versus the 190 tons we did raise sure. of food a year. Um, pretty much our goal is to keep supporting those seven food banks because now more than ever, they need it because people who were not currently using their services are using their services because of what's going on with the health crisis, because maybe they lost their job or their kids are at home. So they had to quit their job. There's a lot going on that now more than ever, People are reaching out to get that little bit extra help that they need. And we want to be able to provide it to those food banks. And in regards to like Fun Food Fridays, like I said, we started a few years ago. We started with one school. We've added a school ever since. So I think our, our plan there is as long as we keep getting the corporate sponsors and donors that we need to support the program, we'll look at continuing to grow and adding in more schools. The three, the three schools that we support um, nine, I think it's like for all of them, at least 90% or more are on a free or reduced lunch. So we don't have like a, 
process to apply or anything. And, and we make it easy for the kids to not feel um, discriminated, you know, that they're getting it, but no one else is. So they all really like it. Yeah. A lot of what you do has to just feel, feel super rewarding or, or fulfilling yeah. in, 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 in that. What's maybe a, a memory that you feel like you've had in your, uh, let me think here, 16, 14 years uh, <laughs> working with them that you, you know, that you think back on or, or something you'd like to share with us? Um, you know, I have obviously a lot of memories. We are like sure. a small family. Um, I've gone to people's weddings. I've gone to people's funerals. Um, but I would say like when we first started Fun Food Fridays, we went to um, the elementary school that we were supporting just to see how it was going. It was Christmas times. So we had taken, you know, candy canes to kind of give extra with the bags. And um, when we got to the school, it was um, Randolph Elementary they had a fifth grade class that was doing the deliveries and it was the same fifth grade class. And what I thought was really cool because of what I do for my career is um, the teacher is talking to us about how they tried one thing and it didn't work. And then they, they were trying to improve their time and their delivery speeds to get it down to like this precise, you know, well-oiled machine. And I just thought, wow, on top of them, like feeling rewarded to like give that to the kit, the other kids in the school, they actually were like learning something they could use in life with like process improvement that they probably didn't realize they were learning, you know? So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And I guess kind of in that same vein, then what's one of the favorite parts of the work that you're doing with Project Topeka? You know, what, what keeps you, what keeps you motivated and, and just, you know, drives, drives you in your work? Um, I would say it's the fact that, you know, whether it's a coworker or a neighbor or, or I may not even know who I'm supporting. I know that everything we are doing to raise the funds and raise the food items to go to the food banks is all staying within our community. So I know I'm helping someone local. It makes me feel good to know, like, we're not trying to do a handout. We're trying to do a hand up and to help those when you need it. So maybe it's only for a couple of months or maybe it's for a year. You know, and then hopefully those people who use our services when they are able to, you know, give donations or support in whatever way they see fit, they'll come back and help support us because they found the value in what we did for them. Absolutely. For someone who was either interested in donating to your service or someone who was interested in in being a recipient of your service, what would your, where's your website or what is your website? Um, our website is www.projecttopeka.org. There are two awesome. T's in there. Make sure you do Project and Topeka. Okay. Um, there's information on there, how you can donate. Um, we do have right on there where you can do PayPal donations through our PayPal site um, that we have set up. If you want to contact any of us, there's an email address on there. I believe it's ptinfo at projecttopeka.org that goes to like four of us. Yeah. So if you're looking for someone to come and, you know, like I said, judge or, you know, help you come up with some ideas on, you know, what works well for a food drive, like at an organization or, you know, your business, we can certainly help there. Um, all of our numbers and the committee is on there. So you can reach out to any of us. Um, and then in regards to receiving the donations, like I said, the seven food banks we support, they do have a checks and balance system. So there are other food banks out there that we do not support because we do have some criteria for that. Um, like specifically, it's not targeted at a certain organization. So if it's, you know, like the VA actually has a food bank, but it's for veterans only. Um, there's a food bank, you know, um, I think it's Catholic Charities has a food bank. So they're looking at certain cohorts of people where we want to make it where anyone within the community can go. And then our other biggest thing is they're using the um, the name of the program changed, so I can't think of it, but they're using the checks and balance system that the Community Resource Council has put in place to be able to make sure we're tracking that we're giving those items out. And like I said, helping, you know, give that hand up versus hand out and, and you just can't roll up and then get a thing of food. <laughs> You actually have to go through some kind of process, right? So I see. Um, if another food bank was to stand up, uh, ironically, in all the years I've been doing this, it's still been seven. Yeah. Um, we would happily like look and make sure that their criteria fits what we're looking for in a food bank and then support them. Great. 
are those uh, those seven food banks that you mentioned? Can can you find more information about them on your website also? Yep, we list out the seven food banks that we support. And if they have a website, we do have that on there as well. There's a few small ones that do not have websites, um, but we certainly mention all seven on there. Awesome. It, I think that's one thing, just as a side note, I'm seeing with so many organizations we've been talking to is just collaboration is so important. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot more crossover than I than a lot of young young professionals here in Topeka even realize with a lot of the organizations we're talking to. Um, you, just to I guess get your final final uh, piece here. So uh, if a Forge member was was interested in either volunteering or providing a monetary donation. Um, they can check out your website and, and find yep. out most of that. Is that right? Yep. Awesome. And then it's interesting you mentioned that about collaboration. We actually collaborate with other nonprofits out there. Um, obviously, with COVID, things have been a little differently this year. But um, for several years, when Relay for Life happens, we get the canned items that go in their luminaries. Mm -hmm. So instead of using sand to hold down the luminaries at Relay for Life. They use canned items and then we oh, get all the cool. canned items. And then TARC, um, this year they're not doing the walkthrough because of COVID, but generally they do the walkthrough before they fully open up TARC Winter Wonderland. And with that, they generally ask, I think for like a food item and a dollar, like as a donation, and we would get all of those items as well. So we have some collaboration that we've done with even other nonprofits to help both of us out and not take away from what they're trying to advocate for, but also help us too. Awesome. Well, it's yeah. so crazy to, to believe that uh, you all have been, been active now for 35 years and yeah. here's to, here's to 35 more. Uh, again, uh, just thank you again for talking with us this morning. We're excited to share uh, more information with, with forge members and get more young professionals involved in, in, a, in such a great cause. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, like I said, because we are smaller, we are all volunteers. Most of us have full-time jobs. You know, we try and keep up with the traffic. We try and <laughs> put stuff on our website, but like, yeah. we're always looking for those volunteers who have those skills too, because I didn't go to school for like mass media stuff, you know? So it's kind of one of those interesting when you're trying to keep up with the changing of the times and right. making sure you're staying relevant, but not having to hire someone is always, you know, we, we look for that. If, if somebody wants to donate some time to us, like absolutely. That's another way to give back without having to donate, you know, funds or um, items, you know, just in certain ways like that, that we need help because with us all working, sometimes that's, you know, the thing that will fall to the side is making sure we can keep things going, you know, because we don't hire someone to do that. We just do it on our own. Exactly. Well, thank you again, Amber. Uh, any any closing thoughts you'd like to share with, other than what you just shared, <laughs> any closing <laughs> thoughts you'd like to share with the uh, uh, no, professionals here in Topeka? So. Uh, well, I appreciate you, you having us on. We're excited. Uh, this has been a, a fun series and it's just so great to be able to find out more about, about what your team's doing and again, hear about the ways that you're, you're helping give back to the community. <laughs>